Good morning. This lecture is on HIV AIDS. There is quite a lot of information um, that goes into great detail about HIV AIDS. And honestly, it's a fascinating subject. It's always fascinated me uh, in the way it replicates, which I'll talk about briefly. But I'm not going to get into all the details. I'm going to kind of cut to the chase and give you the information that you absolutely must have. So it's not a whole lot. So what is HIV and AIDS? So HIV stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus. It's a virus, and it is transmitted through blood and body fluid. And we're going to talk a little bit more about transmission in a, in a few minutes. And then AIDS is Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. So AIDS is the end result of HIV. So the virus causes or can cause AIDS, um, but it doesn't have to. We have so many different chemical cocktails that are being used currently um, that reduce viral loads that we're seeing people living a very full and robust life with HIV. So, um, but what I want to concentrate on is the nursing teaching plans for people with HIV, prevention of HIV, and then care plans with relationship to um, medications, particularly Zytovudine, that is one that ATI likes to ask about, and also the opportunistic infections that are common in people with HIV. Okay, so that's basically what we're going to be talking about today. So what is HIV? It is, like I said, it's a viral infection, and it is progressive if it's not treated, right? Um, the final stage of it is AIDS. There's no cure for either, and it definitely has the potential to be fatal. Uh, the good news is that the numbers of incidents in this country in this PowerPoint are kind of old. They're back from 2015 and 2016. Um, but the numbers have not increased dramatically since 2015 and 2016, which is kind of good. And actually, for women, um, the numbers are declining. And I'm going to tell you this, that one of the number one ways to prevent it when it comes to sexual transmission, use a condom. Nothing else I can tell you. So there are two subtypes of HIV. We're not even going to talk about HIV too, because that is a very rare subtype. When we in this country discuss HIV, it's HIV-1 that we're talking about. And that's, it's worldwide. So it's not just this country, but it's all countries. The interesting part of HIV is really the way it gets into the body and the way that it replicates, okay? So when you're exposed, so you have, say, unprotected sex with someone that is HIV positive, and now you've been exposed to it through the body fluids. So the HIV virus binds on to the CD4, which is a, a T4 lymphocyte. It's a white blood cell that we have, right? So the virus attaches itself to the receptor of these CD4 cells. And the two membranes, the membrane of the virus and the membrane of your cell, your white blood cell, fuse together. And then there's this process that's called reverse transcriptase. So the virus's RNA changes to DNA that looks just like yours, right? And then that DNA that's really HIV, but it looks like yours, goes into a host cell and it makes more of itself. That's, that's the, the quickest way. So basically what happens is it keeps replicating itself. More of me, more of me, more of me. And your body only sees it as your own cells, your own T lymphocytes, white blood cells, when in reality they're HIV cells and they're useless, so they can't perform the functions of a normal CD4 or T4 lymphocyte, that particular type of white blood cell. So now it's useless. And the ones that actually are useful in protecting you from disease, the numbers of those CD4 cells go down, 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 down. And here's an important thing to know. When we are looking at a patient with HIV, and checking their progression, um, seeing if they're responsive to the treatments that we're giving them, et cetera. Two things that we look at. We look at the CD4 count, and it's later on in, in here, and you'll see the highlighted uh, slide. So CD4 count, if it's less than 200, 
you no longer have HIV, you now have AIDS, right? Because the CD4 count, which is T4 lymphocytes, those white blood cells, if the, the numbers are less than 200, basically it might as well be zero. So they're ineffective. They are useless in preventing infection. And then the other thing we look at is something called the viral load. And you may hear somebody say, oh, you know, my viral load was undetectable. Well, that's good news. So that means when we do a blood test and we're looking in the person's blood for the amount of virus, we don't see it. It's undetectable. So that's good news. That means that the treatment that's being used is working efficiently. And so they are not progressing to AIDS. We've kind of got them at a standstill in the disease progression, if that makes sense. You know, this chapter does go into a lot of information about the antiviral drugs and the antiretroviral drugs. I'm not going to get into all that. You're not going to be a pharmacist or a chemist. Um, I will talk a little bit about the progression. So when you are actually infected, what you have is something called clinical latency. So in other words, it's slow. You won't have any symptoms. But meanwhile, inside those T4 counts, those CD4 counts are dropping. They're going down, down, down. And in about typically 8 to 12 years, it, it can be until you actually have symptoms, believe it or not. And what happens is the immune system is just becoming weaker and weaker, and it's becoming inactivated or useless. So HIV basically just takes your immune system that's supposed to protect you and renders it completely useless. So a cold can kill you. And that is a fact. So you'll see on slide 13 where I have it highlighted. So with AIDS, you have a CD4 lymphocyte count less than 200. And then also it's less than 14% of your total uh, lymphocytes. And then we're going to talk about opportunistic infections like candidiasis and Kaposi sarcoma. Um, I'm not going to get into the progression of it. Um, uh, or statistics or any of those things, but I do want to talk about how it's transmitted. Casual contact cannot transmit HIV. Let me say that again. Casual contact. So casual contact means a hug, a kiss on the cheek, right? Those things do not transmit HIV. It has to be blood, breast milk, semen, vaginal secretions, okay? And the roots of transmission are, well, sexual, right, through sexual intercourse. Um, and believe it or not, statistically, anal intercourse increases the risk. And then also parenterally. So in other words, people that have a drug addiction that use injectable drugs, they tend to share needles. And so that's a very common method of transmission. And then perinatal. So if you have a woman who's HIV positive, it can then be passed on to the fetus, you know, during, during the pregnancy. But make sure that you know that Zytovudine, and you should know this because this is one of the meds that you were supposed to have done a template on, you should know that Zytovudine is given to the pregnant female and it can absolutely help to prevent the transmission of HIV to that fetus. So the fetus can be born HIV free. Okay. So make sure that you know that. I am going to fast forward through all of the, you know, other slides that talk about safe sex practices. I mean, if you if you want to laugh, Google dental dam, and that is on page 22, and also abstinence. So when we talk about safe sex, abstinence, we know doesn't work. People will have sex. And a monogamous sexual relationship, of course, would be the ideal. Limiting sexual partners would be good, too. If you can't do any of those things, you must use a condom. Um, that's really, condoms are the number one way to prevent the spread of sexually transmitted disease and pregnancy prevention. Don't forget about that. And, you know, sharing needles uh, is sharing any kind of equipment, right, is, is also um, one of the, uh, the, the higher ways that people can transmit it, right? Um, Perinatal transmission prevention, I talked about that already. So on, on slide 24, they talk about the zytovudine. So mom gets it, right, while she's pregnant, and also baby will get it for the first six weeks of life. Okay, so make sure you know that that is a question that ATI or the board may ask you. Um, real quickly, post-exposure prophylaxis. Uh, I've never had a needle stick. 
I'm not saying that to be braggadocious. I'm just stating a fact because I did not want to have a needle stick, so I was always very careful. So you always, you know, prevention, prevention, prevention. If it should happen, the very first, the nursing priority is wash the site. Wherever you got stuck, wash it with soap and water, okay? And if, it, if, if blood or body fluid splashed into your mucous membranes of your eyes, your mouth, your nares, you want to flush those, heavily flush them with water. Um, we are now using post-exposure prophylaxis medication. So if you do indeed get stuck, you will, you know, wash the site. You will, uh, we will test the source once it's reported to the nurse manager, unit manager, DON, uh, to see if in fact that patient is HIV positive or not. And if they are, um, you will begin treatment, but we won't wait to find out if they are or not. We're going to start the treatment within hours after the exposure, and it's an antiretroviral drug that we use. Um, you can look through the rest of the slides that talk about the early HIV phase versus the late phase and the kinds of things that happen, um, but I want to talk about the complications briefly. So just be familiar with AIDS-wasting syndrome. And basically what that means is just the patient wastes away. Weight loss more than 10%. Um, for more than 30 days, chronic weakness, chronic fever, chronic diarrhea. They can also get AIDS dementia complex, which looks just like plain old dementia, except it's got a psychotic um, side to it. So they'll have memory impairment, uh, personality changes, hallucinations, that's the psychosis, uh, loss of balance slow response, also called a lag response. Um, you know, these are, these are signs of dementia, but with AIDS dementia complex, it's kind of a combination of dementia symptoms with a little psychotic um, features. When we talk about opportunistic infections, candidiasis, and you all know the treatment for candidiasis, which is candida albicans. So it's a fungus among us, nystatin swish and swallow. Um, I'm not going to get into the cytomegalovirus. Um, tuberculosis is definitely a risk, you know, opportunistic infection. Pneumocystis pneumonia is a type of pneumonia that uh, the patient can get that's fungal and it can, it can kill them. And then the other thing is a type of cancer that's called Kaposi's sarcoma. So we don't see it much anymore, but if you want to see a good movie, watch the movie Philadelphia with Tom Hanks. It's an old movie. That's got to be 30 years old. But he's an attorney in Philly. Um, he's gay, and he winds up with AIDS. And he really does a great job of, of acting. And you will see some good examples. I'm going to throw a picture of Kaposi's sarcoma in so that you can kind of see what they look like. They're big lesions, and they are head to toe. Uh, and true story, back in the 70s, when this whole thing started, I promise you, they called it the gay cancer. They didn't, and when I say they, I'm talking about to the healthcare community in general. No one knew what it was. No one knew how to handle it. No one understood how it was transmitted or how it acted once it was in the body. No one understood. And there was really a lot of hysteria. Um, a lot of uh, very homophobic behavior. If you want to see a good movie about that, watch The Normal Heart. That is a made-for-HBO movie. Um, really, really great representation of what went on in the 70s. Um, the government didn't even want to finance HIV. We didn't know it was HIV. They didn't want to finance the gay cancer research because it's only hurting the gays. Right? So at any rate, um, that's really all you need to know. There are so many good resources out there if you do want more information, but in terms of what you need to know right now, CD4 count less than 200 or 14% of the total lymphocyte count, no more HIV, it's AIDS, zydovudine, make sure you understand what it is, what it's used for, side effects, right? Um, Make sure you understand transmission, no casual contact. It's through sex, blood, body fluids, breast milk. And uh, make sure you know what the viral load means. It's the blood test where we're looking to see how much of the virus is detectable. If it's not detectable, you're good. You're not HIV free, but you will not be symptomatic. 
So just ask Magic Johnson. All right, that's really all you need to know, and I am out of here. Talk to you on the next lecture.